Hello, my name is Tracy. I'm 58 years old. And at the age of 50, I was diagnosed with adult asthma. So in 2015, um, I was having difficulties breathing. And I went to the doctor and the doctor said, um, you have bronchitis. So I had never had any issues with breathing. I had never had bronchitis. I wasn't sure, you know, why I was doing what I was doing. Now, I do have a family history of asthma. I have uh, my father, my sister, brothers, all of them had asthma. So I was familiar with the sound that I was hearing, but I had never experienced it myself. So I end up going to the hospital and they diagnosed me with asthma and I continue to go to the hospital for over a year with different breathing issues, um, wheezing issues. So they would constantly give me prednisone, do nebulizers and send me home. So with this going on for over a year, they said, okay, well, we've diagnosed you with adult onset of asthma. I followed up with my primary care physician who initially started me on flow vent inhaler, prednisone, and nasal spray. They took me off of the flow vent to Advair. And then from Advair, I was still taking the prednisone and different inhalers, and I was still having asthma attacks. And at that time, I had to go to back to the hospital again with another asthma attack that occurred when I was coming home. I left my car door open and my neighbor saw it was open because I was wheezing so bad and I was trying to get into the house. So the neighbor came over, they called 911. I end up going to the hospital um, with another asthma attack. They changed it from Advair to Advair 500 milligrams, prednisone, nebulizer treatments again. So I followed up again with my primary care physician. I said, something has to be done. We're going to have to figure out why I keep having these asthma attacks, what's causing it. I'm familiar with it from my family history, but why am I now having it as an adult? So after visiting with my primary care physician, I had another episode which caused me to be in a hospital for four days and it triggered a severe asthma attack. And I went to my primary care and said, I don't know what's going on. I don't know what caused it. So she got me into a pulmonologist and this was in 2020. And I went to the pulmonologist and he said, we're gonna run some blood tests. Um, I see you just got released from the hospital and it looks like you may have what is called eosinophilic asthma, which I had never heard of. So I asked him, would you explain what that is? Because I had never heard of it. I thought it was just asthma was just asthma. So he said, well, it's in your blood cells. So he said, but before I'm going to check and see if you're allergic to anything. So he did all of the tests to see if I was allergic to anything. I'm not allergic to dander. I'm not allergic to dust mites. I'm not allergic to um, dogs or cats or any of the mold or anything that normally causes asthma. So then he said, well, you know, you have, because it's in your blood, the prednisone you're taking and all the inhalers, you're gonna need to try something a little bit different. Because of the insurance, we have to go through certain steps to make sure that you qualify for a new treatment 
which is a biologic. So I said, okay. So over the next three months, I would come back in three months later. He said, uh, how many times did you have to take prednisone? I had to take prednisone a dose for, you know, one dose in those three months. How many times did you have to use your nebulizer? How many times are you using your inhaler? So he said, let's try you on Trilogy. You take this once a day. This should help open up the airways and give you some relief. So we tried the Trilogy, came back another three months. Trilogy was doing pretty good. Still having asthma attacks. So in 2021, he prescribed the biologic Nucala auto-injector. So he said, well, we're going to take you, we're going to leave you on the trilogy and we're going to, you know, you can have your nebulizer if you need it. So I said, okay. So within 2021 to 2022, I had maybe two asthma attacks where I had to go to the hospital. And then this year, 2023, I haven't had to go to the hospital at all. And I haven't had to have any prednisone this year. So I'm able to do things I haven't done in a long time. I had went on a trip with my niece and um, her daughter wanted to learn how to swim. She wasn't able to swim. So she said, I said, oh, you know, let me try. Um, because I haven't been swimming in over eight years because I couldn't hold my breath and was afraid to get in the water that I would drown. So I said, well, let me see what I can do. So I got in and I went under. I was nervous at first, you know, but she was a little girl. She wanted to learn how to swim. I was just nervous she was. So I finally was able to get her to swim and I was swimming with her and I felt like I was five years old, just like she was swimming. And it was just such a good experience. And I love to swim. So that, you know, that shows that my asthma is under control as of today. One suggestion I have for people who are experiencing asthma is not to hide the fact that you are an asthmatic person. Um, you have to advocate for yourself. You have to ask questions when you go to the doctor. If you don't feel that you're getting what you need, you have the option to choose someone else. Um, it's important to get this under control. There are still a lot of people who have passed from having asthma attacks. There's so many different medicines out there now that we can get this under control. I've experienced this with family members who have passed from having an asthma attack. And they didn't have the options that we have available for us. So you need to advocate for yourself, find what is best for you and what works for you to keep it under control.